Welcome back. This is M Dog. I thought we'd get a little troll in here. We are at the new map, the new Ladoga map. Headed up, trolling towards H3. Kind of wanted to get a little bit of a stretch in here during the day. We'll, we'll see how long work allows me to to do this, but hopefully we can get in a few minutes here trolling Ladoga. I just haven't done it in a while. I don't know if I'm basing it off of the amount of comments on VK or even in Discord. Oh, that's a big pike. It doesn't seem like um, it's necessarily been great lately. I mean, I, I just don't see as many updates about this as I do like Tuba, Amber, some of those other spots. I was trying to show you really quick what lures we're using. We're using the Handmade Balsa 001, Balsa Minnow 110 006. I think we've got two O hooks basically on everything. The Atomic Raptor 105 004. So we've kind of got several different, or three different lures because I don't know exactly what's working the best. I kind of looked over at like several of the different lures that seem to be popping off on the weeklies and this is basically what I came up with the only one that I'm not using that you could probably also add to that list is um, there's a there's a deep minnow or something it's one of the deep diving ones the larger ones that uh, also shows up some but anyway just thought I'd go with these these three I will tell you so far this balsa has been the most active um, the blue balsa not this balsa the uh, blue one but, you know, again, we haven't been out here long. I think I'd only caught one fish or something before I started recording. Of course, the uh, raptor that we have in the third rod is going to be at a bit of a disadvantage according to how active the bite rate ends up being because it'll spend the least time in the water since it's in my third rod slot, but... That's okay. We'll give it uh, give it a little while, see if we catch anything interesting here in the, at least in the morning hours. I don't know if we'll continue to go in the afternoon or not. Might be a short one. We'll see how it, how it feels. We are almost to the point. We'll go just a little farther and then I kind of want to just cut down this way. We'll just see how that goes. So the Balsa Crank 65F001, that seems to be the most active. Again, very small sample size. Catching a lot of lake trout. Sort of forgot lake trout were in here. You know, I get so focused on the... Um, is that far enough to work? It should be. I get so focused on the salmon. Whew, it's a big big pull there and the the, re the setup over here on the right side this is definitely my lightest setup I mean we don't, we're only running 23 on this one so things are gonna look a little bigger over here in comparison I think both the other side uh, the other ones probably have 27 kilo liters I think I'm going to stop the trolling motor for a second. And once we get this fish in, I'll go ahead and reposition so we can start trolling in the right direction. Oh, is that a Xander? That's going to be a decent Xander. Yeah, three and a half kilo Xander. Nice. I actually thought it'd be a little bit better than that, but it is what it is. Yeah, we're, we're pretty much ready to turn southeast here and start trolling. Yeah, that's basically what we want to do. 
something like how do I uh there we go yeah that looks about right to me let's see how this works We've got that rafter pretty close to the boat, but when fish hit the left and right side, it's just nice to be able to get that third line in pretty quickly. I don't know we're doing the raptor any favors having it that close though. How far does this thing, it's five meter depth, okay. Yeah, we'll see. So far, five fish. Pretty short wait time between catches. Not too bad. By the way, someone was mentioning um, watching my reaction as I had on the San Francisco Green Bay Packers game in one of the last videos I did. Uh, and that was a good game. In fact, the incredible thing about this weekend and I, I'm not a particular fan of any of the teams that are involved in the playoffs this year. I tend to root for the Atlanta Falcons, although I, I just enjoy watching college football more than pro. But uh, I have to say, this has been one of the best, especially for a playoff weekend. I can't hardly imagine a better weekend of football. Uh Every game so exciting, so uh, close. Three of the games, the first three games of the weekend went down to a field goal with no time left on the clock to win the game. And all three were the underdog, or the visiting team at least. And then the fourth and final game of the weekend went to overtime in what was, I mean, some of the most exciting last two or three minutes of a football game maybe I've ever seen. I just... Incredible quarterback and receiver play, just amazing. So, pretty amazing week of football. <laughs> it's just like, wow. All right, it's definitely slowed down. So, so far, at least in this little strip, it has not been as active as, as we found over here. So I'm not sure if that will continue, but thus far, not super impressed with what we're hitting here. Yeah, I'm not sure. Oh yeah, the deep runner minnow. That's what some folks have been using. In fact, someone caught a trophy Xander uh, out here somewhere on the using that deep that deep minnow. Deep runner minnow. Not even sure if I have those. I might. Yeah, I have some of those. I think it looks like they were using the nine, which I just happen to not have. But these are some interesting lures. Kind of cool to see a lure like this having some time in the sun. We could try the eight, I guess. All right, so there we go. The balsa finally gets a hit. it. 
So really that pike and then that Ladoga salmon, both decent, decent sized fish there. Another Xander. You know what I'm thinking about doing? Is putting the Raptor on this one. Just to see. That way the fastest bite rate lure is on the middle rod. We were using the 65 though, just this one. And this one only goes down 2.5 meters. So I don't know, seems like that might be a better solution. We'll see if it kills the bite rate though of the, of the balsa. Most people are talking about Amber right now though. Amber seems to be the place to be. I definitely have had a good time at Amber today and yesterday as well. And a lot of posts on VK about Amber. Some other places too though. Not just amber, but a lot of amber, which I never mind. I, I like when the... I did see there was an interesting post recently about Volkov, which is always good to see. Ooh, yeah, there you go. Hit it, baby. Go. Just keep running. All right, so where were we? Kind of in the middle of I-4. And right now we are just trying to hold on for dear life. It's so interesting. It seems like the fish tend to just uh, run for depth when, when they hook in. Not that they don't run at all away. They do a little bit. But mostly what I'm seeing is just like they go for depth. I can tell already this is going to be a waiting game. This is on our smallest rig. That's the other thing we could consider doing is just putting the two bosses out on our two stronger rigs and putting this one away might be just as efficient, if not more so. I don't know. Hopefully we can get this fish in. I definitely um, improves the quality of the video to at least have one like above average fish caught. But yeah, there's an interesting post about a spot at Volkov using night crawlers, uh, catching several different species of fish, but most notably maybe some uh, some really nice vimbas. Which is cool. But because you've got night crawlers on, you've got the excitement of 
having to plan for burbot and I guess outside chance of catfish, but. But at Amber, it seems like if you want to sit on trophies, some of the lemon and citrus options may still be the best. But if you just want to make silver and have a really nice bite rate, go go uh, go caviar. At least that's for me what it seems like has been proving to be the case. All right, what do we have our friction break on? Let's go 25. Start seeing if we can make some uh, make any progress here at all. All right, so we can stand up now, even while we're trolling. Now we can't affect, you know, the direction we're trolling anymore, but it still is such a cool change, a cool improvement. In a situation like this, I don't necessarily feel like I need to change the direction of the troll just yet. And we can easily transition back to sitting down if we want to gain more control again. All right, I'm gonna ease it up to 26 now. It does seem like we're starting to make a little progress at times at least. But standing up, we can get a little more, um, maybe a little more pressure on this fish. Hopefully wear him out. All right, I'm going to sit back down just so we can circle a little bit. Let's don't let him get going too far away from us. Well, he heard me talking about him and he was not too happy about it. Maybe he had just settled down towards the bottom and that's why we weren't. And that's why we weren't seeing him run as much. Put a little torque on the fish. Let that rod put some pressure. The next thing I probably should do before I put too much wear and tear on these three reels that I use for trolling this place, I probably should replace and upgrade the grease on all three. Because my suspicion is that you will, I mean, surely it is programmed to where that more expensive grease will help you not damage stuff as quickly. I, I just would think it would pay off in the long run. Well, we've made a lot of progress on him. That doesn't mean he couldn't just take off again, but. You know, one of these times when we think we have a decent salmon or something on, we're going to pull out a sturgeon and just be completely, completely shocked. I'll do my best not to fall out of my chair. I mean, there's nothing about this fish that makes me think it's a sturgeon. I'm just saying that's bound to happen eventually, right? Pull out a 10 kilo sturgeon and try not to land in the water. Oof. Trying to get the boat positioned here a little bit again. just doing circles right now
I'm impressed with how much endurance this fish has. It's never felt like a massive fish to me, but it has, it's had good endurance and it, um, you know, with this little 23 fluorocarbon leader, it's, uh, it's kind of having his way with me. It's kind of been staying the same distance away from us for a while now. We made a lot of the um, made a lot of the progress back from the initial run where it really did take quite a bit of line, and since that time, it's just sort of been a give and take, staying at about the same distance, I would say. I need to watch it here. We don't really want to run like right over it with the boat but I think it's going to end up being just to the side again so that should be fine Go up to 27, a little more pressure. Just wanna make sure it is still on the side here. By the way, I think at Amber, some folks are are using Esterberry or Black Current maybe. And then some folks are still using the Cocoa, which I haven't tried in a while. I think for certain rares, at least, the Cocoa can, can be good. I just don't know overall if it can compete with how good Caviar is doing right now. Or the Citrus stuff, if you're trying to hit trophies, maybe. This fish is still not ready to come in. Not quite yet, at least. Yeah, and we also need to turn at least a little bit. There goes all that progress. That's amazing, isn't it, that it can still go on a run like that? I actually think this fish might end up getting all the way tired before we get it in. Woo. Woo. 
Wow. It's been a while since we've been this far away from the fish. Let's see where it is, like in the water. It's one of the great things about this um, Tama Sal 5000. It's got a sneaky, decent sized reel on here. So we've got a lot of spool. So do you have a guess at what it is or what size it is? Cause I, I feel like I have no clue. I just haven't spent enough time fishing out here to really pick up on patterns and stuff. At first I was thinking salmon cause it does seem to be doing a lot of head jerking and movement, but I'm thinking about back to some of those like Atlantic salmon fights at Volkov and how much it like jerks its head and stuff. And maybe that's what it is, one of the salmons, but I'm not sure that it's doing it as much as, as I remember sometimes it would do it at Volkov. So I'm not, I'm just not sure. So we're back to kind of where we were before it went on that big run again. Theoretically getting it pretty close to the top here. Is it finally ready to come in? I'm also tempted right now to turn the engine off, but I haven't decided for sure. I just don't want to, all right, I'm going to stop engine. Let's see, without the movement of the, of the engine and just the fish pulling, how much strength it still has. 
pretty good. See, some of that is mitigated by the fact that we were moving the boat towards the fish. I am impressed. I guess it'd be kind of cool if it was a trophy Xander. I, I just don't know, even with the 23 kilo, I don't know that I think that a trophy Xander would still be out in the water like this. I think it's gotta be a little bigger than that. I was not expecting this to spend like over half of this video fighting one fish. You never know at Ladoga though. This is a mean fish. Burning our reel up there. Apparently we've been pulling another fish all around the lake too, on the other line. This is going to be a night catch it looks like if we can get it in. Not quite ready to go up to 28 friction break.
Somebody was just asking about if I noticed any difference with the new Megara real grease. And honestly, I'm the wrong person to ask. Here's the problem. I just do not pay attention to details enough. So I don't track like how quickly things are wearing or I kind of just, you know, with that, with that new grease on the Megaras, I just figured, hey, I use these all the time. If there's a higher quality grease in the long run, it probably will pay dividends. I haven't noticed any difference in using them as in their performance, but I wouldn't expect to notice any difference. And I'm just not a, enough of a details person to pick up on, like, oh, is it wearing a little slower? Hopefully some people that are good at paying attention to details will do some testing there because I would be really curious about that. But that's a good question. Yeah, back to my statement, which, which feels like 20 minutes ago, might be, might have been 20 minutes ago. I'm not sure we're getting this fish in until it's pretty much completely worn out if we get it in at all. I mean, I don't think we'll get spooled. I just, a fish fight this long, bouncing around this much, I just am afraid it's going to pop off or something, but I'm trying to be as cautious as possible with not right clicking and keeping the slack steady, keeping the pole pointed up in the air. I'm trying. I just think it's interesting how this fight has been such a tug of war of getting it into about this point and then the fish just going on these long runs just time and time again back and forth back and forth This will teach me. I don't think I will do this again with the 23 kilo leader. What I'll probably do is start holding this rig and just putting smaller lures on it, trying to avoid the big boys.
and try to catch the big boys on the two rigs that are set up for big boys. We'll see what size this fish ends up being, but I just have a feeling we would have long had this fish in on, on either of the other two rigs I'm trolling with here. All right. Felt like that was a chance there to get it in. I just can't tell exactly how far away it is from me, but we're close. Just need it to kind of give us a second and let us pull it in. Ah. Yeah, so it got close to the boat and then it took off again. Not unusual, although the unusual part is just how long this has been going on. But that's the closest we've gotten the fish to the boat yet. Damn three dollar in chat said good morning fellow angers. I mean in game chat. Of course I'm not streaming right now. I'm just recording, but I would say good morning to you back. I just can't take a chance on typing right now. All right, going up to 28 here. We're gonna touch red, but hopefully, yeah, I might not be willing to sit on red like that. I'm gonna go back to 27 for now. Funny to think about if this was a catfish, we would just be manhandling it, forcing it in, trying to be careful not to snap anything, but basically forcing it in. But this kind of fish, I just don't think you can do that, especially with this rig setup we have. I want to try to stay on top of it here with the boat, not let it get too far away again. going to run right over it, are we? Just a little update here. I got a trophy red starfish from 83 on citrus stuff. Nice. That's awesome.
Yeah, I'm hearing a lot of people talk about 83. There's two or three spots right now at Amber. Definitely worth checking out. So we're in I-5 now. We're back to heading southeast at the moment. Where is this fish going? Have we actually passed it? Kind of looks like we passed it. All right, I'm gonna stop engine for a minute here. I can't really tell where it is. It'll probably run a little bit, but. All right, I kind of see where it is now. Maybe we should. Maybe we should keep chasing because. See if we can get on the side of the fish where it's on our right again. Back up in I-4. Which is, I think, where we've been for most of this, most of this time, sort of doing big circles out here. Pretty far out there again. We might be able to go to 28 now. Oh, I went way far down. I didn't realize that. Okay. I was at like 25 or something. That was from when I set the rod down. Not sure what to tell you. Except to don't come weak at this uh, at this Ladoga map. Also, don't ever go out here with just one ticket for boat pass. We're about an hour in game from having to use a second boat pass. Thankfully, I do have one more. Probably ought to start keeping two backups.
All right, I went ahead and selected it just to make sure. If for some reason the notification wasn't working or something, I just didn't want to take a chance. So the notification did just pop up. I was right. Boy, how frustrating would it be if that thing glitched out and it transported us back to shore? I was trying to think if uh, actually turning the engine on and increasing our speed just a touch would make a difference, but I think it would just cause problems. I mean, we would catch up to the fish faster, but then we'd be struggling with keeping it on the side instead of running, rolling over it. And I think just keeping the trolling motor on is fine. We've never been in danger of getting spooled on this one. It's just a matter of the fish can just swim away from us whenever it chooses still. Have the fish I'm trying to figure out it like it's just in my experience this size fish this kind of fish I don't feel like they usually fight this long although maybe some changes were made I mean they did get bigger right the salmon sizes they switched around the Ladoga species with the Atlantics in terms of some of the locations and I think sizes even. The Atlantic is the big one, right? The Atlantic gets up to be the biggest and Ladoga is the now closer to the size the Atlantic's used to be. I think I have that straight, but I mean, I've certainly chased some salmon around Volkov back in the day for a while just not sure that I remember for a while being this long of a while. And if this is a Xander, I'm refunding the game. I'm just not, I mean, I don't, I no longer see any indication of the fish getting tired. I mean, now we'll see, because we're slowly getting it back up to the boat again, like we did last time. We're approaching that same spot. 
and every other time we've gotten to this point or even closer, it just takes off again. I'm also amazed that that other fish is still around. All right. I'm not going to count my chickens before they hatch, but it is definitely... See? That's why you don't do it. That's why you don't even talk. It gets close to the boat, and it just doesn't like what it sees. And it takes off. Got no grip on it when it doesn't want me to. I mean, one thing that's a little different this time is we've kept it close to the boat. It's still gone on little runs or whatever, but... All right, we're setting it up here. We've got a chance, right? I'm going to go back up to 28. I still haven't used right-click. We're probably at the point where we should see if we can't just get it all the way in here. Oh, I hate to do it that much, but it's so close now. Oh, get me back in the boat, please. Can't lift it. There we go. We have no energy, too. That's another reason why using right click is can be counterproductive. Oh, it is just right here now. Hmm. Do we throw down the anchor to kind of provide some counterweight? I can't, okay. Nope, don't do that. Kind of tempted to um, set it down. Now that anchor should sit in a second, and I'm hoping it'll help us get the final pull.
<laughs> what in the world? What happens when two immovable objects meet? Hopefully the anchor wins. We're putting incredible pressure on everything right now. Just hoping this fish doesn't pop off. But we got to get it out of the water. Or try to. We could go up to 29, see if that helps. Oh, I see the fish. Hey, it's that moment. That moment finally happened. Foreshadowing. Holy cow. How many sturgeons are at this place? By the way, kudos to people five days ago that brought in a 281 kilo Baltic sturgeon. Let's just hope they had the appropriate leader size and all that at least. Anything? Anything? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so what else is here? I thought there was another sturgeon here. That's not the sturgeon I was expecting to catch, to be honest with you. This is what I was thinking. This is what I was thinking. I'm sure we would, we would much rather it have been a 40 kilo Lodoga, Lodoga sturgeon, right? Are there any other sturgeon that I don't know about here? Nope. Okay. All right, let's get this perch out of the water. Sorry in advance if the name of this video was um, 40 kilo sturgeon. Might be a little misleading, but it's probably what I'm going to go with. I'll be right back. Wow. Okay, well, we learned our lesson. That will, as long as I don't forget, that will uh, inform how we approach trolling here. Wait, what? We didn't have a lake trout that was... <laughs> Give me a break. All right, whatever. Um... <laughs> It's probably better to sell this on the cafe. So that's 44 silver. All right, 44. Ooh, 181 for one fish. Not bad. Not great though. It probably did that much damage to our gear. It was fun though. I have to admit, it was fun. All right, folks. As always, thanks for watching. And how about that 40 kilo sturgeon? Wink, wink. I'll see you next time. Tight lines. Hey, let me know about your horror stories from New Ladoga. And uh, we can be in misery together. I'll catch you next time.